I offer for everybody a 30-minute free discovery call. If you just want to get your uh, questions answered, please feel free to reach out. This is not a sales call. I'm not getting you into anything. It's just like, please feel free to, to join. I've been in the armoring and this work uh, professionally since 2010, but into Tantra and sexual sexuality almost 25 years. I just went uh, into the world of consent in 2014. And uh, I have done, I don't know, probably something around thousand more or less sessions with individuals, uh, genital de-armoring, body de-armoring, emotional de-armoring, so all this kind of stuff. And I have been um, doing a lot of uh, one-on-one -on -one situations with my partner over these years and uh, try to... Um, apply everything that I was knowing as a professional body worker and as a kind of therapist to my partner. And when I went deeper into the consent work and the agreement field, I just figured out that I had an agenda that I just wanted to heal my partner to a certain degree, do something that she hasn't asked for. And then I recognized that she was kind of thinking that I did that for myself, even though I was thinking it's good for her. So we had complete two different interests. And in my experience, when it came to more proximity and lovemaking and in intimacy, um, it created exactly the opposite. Instead of getting really closer and deeper in, um, I just recognized that uh, instead of being with her and um, um, letting us dive deeper into each other it just created more separation so i completely on one point in my relationship in my life when i d dive deeper into the um, consent work and how the nervous system works i actually completely stopped absolutely radical being therapeutically with with, with my partner totally and um so this is my approach today and uh and i don't want to be my partner's therapist anymore i don't want to do any de armoring anymore i would send my partner rather to a professional and say sorry i don't want to do that because the power differentiation is something i don't want to deal with in relationships so i want to have an equal dynamic even though there are different approaches there are possible specifically from a perspective of being a consent nerd and and sometimes when i look back in my life i think i was a little bit toxic with consent and a little bit rigid like a co consent robot you have to ask before everything falls otherwise just it's it's you know it's in relationship it can be a total nightmare you know when you ask every five seconds just like if something is allowed or not it's just like it's a killer for for for, for juiciness and somehow if you avoid asking for things and you don't have a really field of agreement and it can do exactly the opposite, you know, just like just not asking for it or asking for it can open it totally. But what I want to say is because I know the dynamics so in detail, specifically when it comes to the training that we do, when it comes as well to, you know, um, demonstrations that we do. So when we work on somebody else, we have to know that when you work on somebody, that we, we work with the person and the person we're working with, of course, it's for them. But it's not really for them because the person who we're working with is actually giving us the opportunity to show something for others. Yeah? So we need to explain that in detail that this is transparent. And then when the person after the demo picking a partner and then working with somebody else that they know, don't do to this person what we just have demoed, be in proximity and communication about what the person wants. And you might actually want to practice something and then you need to ask the person, is it okay when I, when I explore that here? So when you know how the dynamics work, it's it's one thing, and when you have I don't know in a in our training ten practice sessions or more, then you might have kind of a good portfolio of experiences, or you have done any other training, and then you take your basket of experience home to your partner who has not done the training or another training, and then you try to practice on your partner something that is not really fully clear and communicated. So having done a training does not mean that the kind of agreement field and the skill set is really solid and good enough on all points that it has an opening. It can have an amazing, beautiful opening, but as well, it can be as well challenging.
Yeah. And this is, this is what I want to throw in there. So having done a training doesn't make somebody an expert as a professional and knowing how to opening up bodies and knowing how to be with somebody and then having a partner who knows what I can do with my hands and with my body. I was just ending up in every time when it came to physical proximity that I was the one who was doing the work. And I just came to this point, just like, I don't want to do the work anymore. I just want to make laugh. I just want to be in connection. I don't want to work, you know. And then, and, and, and then on one point, I just created an expectation that, you know, I've done so much work on you. Now I want to be worked as well on, you know, just like uh, just opening my body. My body wants to be open too. My body wants to be as well prepared. My body wants to be softened. And um, and I came to that point. Just like I don't want to do, I don't want to do work when it comes to love making, you know. And if there's something we need to work through, I'm totally happy. But when it comes to relational proximity, I don't want it to be work. I mean, the theme is the armoring within relationships. So um, I'm single since half a year or so, and uh, so. I'm not in relationship uh, with anybody and, and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really getting reflected with, with somebody and I really enjoy that at the moment. It's just like, oh my God, that's, it's so relaxing. Yeah, it's so good. And I know as well when I was in relationship, when you know certain behavior coming up from the other one or from me and then there is kind of this kind of, well, we just need in, energetically, emotionally in a form of um, defensiveness and, and protectiveness, you know, where there wasn't any closer possible. We need to work through stuff. We need to, we, we need to work and we, we, we need to take the defensiveness and everything out of the way. And then there is this kind of therapeutical in a relationship that has to, to, um, find a resolution, you know, and, 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 and it makes relationship more under pressure. And then, then this pressure, we, we have to work through stuff. Um, or, or as if there is a um, nearly pathological need of working s through stuff, finding something, kind of just like, oh, when I'm getting triggered, then you have to change a behavior. Or one's getting triggered by each other's uh, um, distance growth. So, for example, if one person is going to a training um, or having you know, a, a, a different life path and evolving in a different way and, uh, and sees things differently. So you literally um, have an emotional or spiritual path that you have a different perception of life and the other person is stuck where they are and they just want to do whatever they do and they don't want to change anything. So that means if you are in a relationship with each other uh, and only one person is growing, and the other person is not willing or not capable of following up, it just creates a dismatch. And then is the question, um, how much do you expect the other person to grow? Maybe the other person doesn't want to grow. And maybe you are triggered that the person is as they are, and you just come to a point where you realize your relationship has had this time span of growth, and you see that there is no further development at this point and your journey is over. Or one person just doesn't want the other person to grow because they're feeling their relationship all of a sudden. For example, when it comes to monogamy, we talked about that two webinars before. So, so one person said, well, I just want to be monogamous and the other person wants to be open. And then just like the person who is monogamous is fear-based in, in their approach and doesn't want to have the other person going into other relationships with other people. So I'm good where I am and that means I don't want you to be somewhere else. So let's stay where we are. You know, it's just like the, the question is how can you find a solution by accepting where you are, where the other person is? I've been a sexual body worker for many years and um, I have been in many situations where um, sexual body work was desired and then I was in many situations where sexual um, energy was not desired and then it's my responsibility as the practitioner to draw this clear line, you know, 
Importantly, it doesn't matter if there is sexual energy desired or not desired. It's not about my sexual energy when I provide that work. It's about the energy that the person wants to experience. And my job is to hold that container and create the frame that the person I'm working with has the experience that they choose to have within my limits. You know, and I was, you know, this is this kind of the, the 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 frame building of the profession, literally. But when it comes to to love making with your partner, um, when you actually do a massage or your partner does a massage, and you have the um, frame in your head that it needs to be a session and I only want that to be physically without sensual or without sexual, but then sexual energy comes in and your frame is all of a sudden triggered and confronted by, well, wait a second, this is actually like what I do for a living and all of a sudden everything is ending up in sexual energy and that doesn't resonate with my feeling, then you're literally in a conflict, Yes, right. And, and, and Sana said that very clearly. So there might be some blockages around your sexual energy. But where I want to point that onto is, and we, we talked about that, Diane and I, in the last webinar, and we talked about that as well in the webinar before, about sexual, sexuality or celibacy, for example. But mainly, this is part of my line of work for many years, is when it comes to sensuality in a massage, Many people see sensuality only as a foreplay to sexuality. And when sexuality comes into the equation, sexuality has always the goal of the climax. And that brings a complete different question into the room. Um, can you have a sexual encounter? Can you have a sensual encounter or a sexual encounter that is not goal-oriented? And what happens with your sexuality when your sexuality is not oriented towards the goal? There is no book about the armoring and sessions. And the armoring session is based on the value as your individual carry in your life. Yeah, And then, of course, you have a partner, you have a certain or your partner has a certain set of value, and then the value of you and your partner, they have to kind of match up somehow. And important is, and that's my experience in my life with my partner and in my session work, is transparency and authenticity. You know, So that means that my partner knows what is my set of value, the way how I conduct a session. And this, this value has to be absolutely radical, impeccable. You know, my, my partner knows no matter what, just like in my sessions, there's no intercourse exchange of bodily fluids ever. I have declared that. Yeah, and, and, and you have to declare that yourself. And, but to be honest and authentic, you know, when I'm in a session sometimes and, and there was somebody coming uh, smoking hot and want to have a sexual juice up session and just want to feel it all and you know want me to teach them how to edge and how to activate that part and you know i'm not a robot and of course i feel and, and, and of course i pick up what's going on and i'm not shutting myself down i'm not cutting myself out but i take this responsibility that i'm that i'm doing that for them and i have the responsibility to then tell my partner afterwards oh my god there is this part in me that hates my own value and I would love not to have this value. I would love not to be in this kind of container, but this is where your integrity is measurable and where your values on the table comes to truth. And can you communicate that? That's, that's the question. How do you communicate that? And the way how you set up this frame of your session, you know, this is absolutely up to you. And like Dian Sun and I said that in the training, you know, we have our code of conduct and our values and you have to have that in your life and you have to align them with your partner. I would like to put that theme on the table anyway, specifically when it comes to de armoring and some of you might has uh experience like that, specifically when it comes to lovemaking, so genitals um, between yoni and cock, or penis and vagina, how you want to call it, um, there can be pain points. 
you know. And this pain points internally, and I had just a conversation about that with, with a friend the other day. It's just like specifically when when men, um, you know, working all day, having the stress they have, you know, um, just like being shut down and contracted, and uh, and and need to be functional and having a lot of responsibility and then maybe they're having a partner uh, just like with children at home and then they're having kind of sexual encounter and the only thing what they do is um, uh, having before they go to bed you know the five six minute um, intercourse to release the pressure and the stress they have in their body and um And the question is then, where is that stress going if he is orgasming and ejaculating his stress to release in her body, you know? So, so this, is, this is one part of the conversation. Or women have been somehow penetrated hard or unconsciously and have done or, or, or have, have let have happened a lot of uh, friction, pressure-based intercourse And allowed that to happen to make the partner happy, you know, because he was um, conditioned and educated by porn. This is how sexuality is. And, and then there are different, you know, through the contraction, through the muscle contraction in the, in, 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 in the yoni, that can be, can be the spots created that are painful, yeah. And then you just like have another relationship with somebody else, and then these spots they're getting triggered, you know, and 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 you start feeling them, and and this is my experience with many couples I've been working with that that the the men don't know what to do with this pain, and 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 and, and feels responsible for the pain that he caused. And the woman doesn't really know how to deal with that. And then the question is, if he probably, for example, would come to the armoring training and knows, you know, we do that in the training, taking the tension and the pressure out of the points in the uni, and then he goes home, but she hasn't has, hadn't had the experience. And then he is touching these points. Um, while she does not have the experience, it can trigger a lot of stuff. Yeah. So... Both can come to a de-armoring training or both can have a de-armoring session with a practitioner together. Yeah, um, It might be the way that it can be a practitioner, a female practitioner who shows the man how to touch this spot in the yoni. It might be that this woman chooses in the first place instead of having a Tao master be flown in from XYZ, having another woman that she trusts from, an, from another female having the session first, you know, just like, uh, you know, there's so many different um, uh, points to this equation to take into con consideration so that it's, it's, it's really good to know to put all the details on the table before it comes to a decision and then um, choosing in which direction a session could go. We had the webinar about celibacy and um, and sexual mastery uh, a, a few days back or weeks back, you know, and my thing is um, my thing is edging, you know. I just say that very clearly. I have mastered that path of um, Uh, the, the the kind of non reproductive sexual encounter that is goalless. I just love that. And the question is, when it comes to this approach of um, you know you desire the, the 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 union with source, is literally that's my experience that I want to go there with my partner and I, I want to enter that space into unity and 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 I just don't want to merging into oneness. And, and and when you have you know there is this this saying if you have gotten this this divine kiss once you are ruined forever, and when you when you have touched this realm, just like why the heck would I go back you know if I would just like sexually engage with a, with a, with somebody in my life who has just like okay let's let's go for a stress relief and and quick the 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 the, the, the sleeping pill rub, I'm just not interested. Why would I? So but then the, the question comes. 
you know, on one point, if you meet another person, and of course everybody has their own values and their own set of um, um, engagement, like we said that before with Patrick when it comes to working in that field. But independent, if you're not working in that field, you have to have your own set of value, and then you need to create this dynamic that is kind of functional, the frame, the container. And as we is, call this, this webinar today, uh, the armoring within relationship or within a relationship my question would be in the first place, what is relationship or what is a relationship anyway? You know, there, there, there are this, this ideology about telepathic agreements and con uh, 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 ideology about relationship. What is a relationship? I have no fucking clue what relationship is. And, and, and I don't want to have this, this assumption-based field of telepathic agreements you know and and you know specifically as this consent geek that i am and i totally agree to that what sana said just like if you have this relationship thing in base of consent where you ask your partner every five seconds is it okay if i kiss you is it okay if i touch you is it, is it? it's just like it's complete it's 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 a dead dead end completely utterly where consent becomes toxic you know and nobody wants to have that in their life it's a complete killer but the question is how can you create an agreement field that is providing that frame that you can call relationship you know i have for myself answered that question you know i've i i i designed and developed this this it calls the four pillars of relating and if i'm jumping with somebody else in this container I want to make clear that they have this value in place. And if they don't, it's just like, sorry, I'm not available. Why would I? Well, I've prepared two links, so I just want to make sure that um, everybody's getting some value out of that. So, of course, we have a training coming up. That's the de-armoring training. Uh, the basic training in um, beginning of April is a 10-day training for professionals, not only for professionals, for everybody who wants to know what the armoring is and how to go deeper into that hands-on um, personal guidance. So there's a link, please check it out. So, and then there is another option if you just have more questions, if you just want to know more about the de-armoring training, if you want to know more about that, what we do and who we are, or you have some questions about your own life, about the armoring, how you can put it in. I offer for everybody a 30-minute free discovery call. If you just want to get your uh, questions answered, please feel free to reach out. This is not a sales call. I'm not getting you into anything. It's just like, please feel free to, to join. Please write a few sentences, a few words in the chat, just like what's your main takeaway, what are you taking with you, what has resonated, what was not your uh, ally, so that we have something that we can actually deal with. Um, yeah, anything that you missed, because we just love providing that spaces and you're more than welcome to join the next one and invite some friends. And uh, so this processing circle like sana said is just one of our signature and this is absolutely transformative people who are here who have been in the training can probably confirm that so please feel free next tuesday come again bring some friends and you're more than welcome and it's free and of course we just talk about our training yeah. but we don't push that onto you but you're more than welcome to join all right, your words are more than welcome in the chat. Please drop them in. Thank you so much for joining. And without you, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and see you hopefully next Tuesday. Or yeah. summer. All right.